Peace, peace. Peace, love, light of healing. Peace, love, light of healing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Y'all climb on in, climb on in. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? I met y'all with a late night one. Let's get some of this work in today. Y'all climb in. Climb in, family. Peace, peace to the gods. Peace to the earths. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Get y'all pens and y'all pads out. Bringing the knowledge on a late night tip. Peace, peace, peace. Yeah, a lot of people been hitting me up about the last video I did talking about food combinations. And I went in on it, but I guess I didn't get to elaborate on it a lot. You know, a lot of the stuff that y'all see is videos that I have pre previously done. That's like two hours long. And what my content creator do, what Jay do is he go through them and he, he smash like two and a half hours within three to five minutes. Sometimes he smash two and a half hours within two or 60 second rails. So it's a lot of information that get missed or that's not heard because we got to take a lot out to keep up with the rails or to keep up with the small mini tips. So I decided to come on here today and, you know, give you all some knowledge. So. You know, once y'all get y'all pens and y'all pads out and y'all notebooks out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's get it. Let's go through it. Let's talk about proper food combination, proper digestion, proper absorption, utilization, and elimination. You know, you have to understand. And then we could talk about the four keys to elimination, too. Uh, the first one will be urination. The second one will be respiration. You actually breathing. The third one will be digestive elimination. You actually pooping through your colon. And the fourth one will be perspiring. You sweating through your skin. These are the four elements of elimination. You know, respiration, breathing in and out, breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide or what you call CO2 constituents. Uh, the second one will be per perspiration or perspiring when you're sweating because your skin is actually a third kidney. It's a filtration mechanism. It don't only scan the environment and bring back a signal that feeds your consciousness, but it actually is a eliminative tool as well. Again, we got urination, which is your kidneys, your urethra, your penis, or your vagina. These things actually get rid of metabolic waste or metabolic solubles. You see that? And then last but not least, you got your digestive uh, organs, def def defecation. You know, we have to do that. So let's talk about it. Once y'all got y'all pens and y'all pads, come on in. Let's talk about it. Type in some nines if you got your pens and your pads. Type in some nines. This is my only YouTube channel, y'all, live. My other, I mean, my only IG channel. The other one is I Am Yaki, which I'm following it. I'm only following five people. One of them is my other backup channel, which I, it's only one picture on there. I don't post. Anybody else hollering at y'all in y'all inboxes, it is not me, family. It's not me. Anybody hitting you up through WhatsApp, it's not me. Anybody asking you for money online, it's not me. I only conduct business through www.yakiawaken.com. So quit letting these people get y'all. So look, check out what I did, family. So my son, I brought my son, I brought Elijah some toys, right? And inside the toy basket, what I noticed was some very, very unhealthy food. The first thing I seen was French fries, curly French fries at that. Kind of looked like your Burger King fries. Then I seen a whole entire hamburger. So I put the hamburger together for y'all. Notice the hamburger got bread on it, or what we're going to call wheat. Notice it got tomatoes on it or what we're going to call the fruit. Notice it got cheese on it or what we're going to call dairy mucus pus forming food or what we're going to call galactose or lactose because it's come from an animal lactose sugar. Then we got a vegetable on it that we call lettuce. We got, of course, our protein, our meat on it, and then it's backed up by another bun, which is wheat. I want to go through each of these things, break down the biochemical makeup of these things and show how this is a piss poor job at combining food and how combining food like this every day of your life will kill you. Not only that, it will shut down your kidneys. Then you're mixing it with fries and these fries or have been fried, been dropped in grease, mixed with oil and all types of stuff. So we're going to talk about all these things. Oh, can't forget your ketchup, which is tomatoes, another fruit or what we call a nightshade. So if y'all ready to get this started, type in some knives. And we're going to go through it. I'm going to teach y'all through my son toys on how we cannot, pro like, this is p piss poor food combining. Let me know when y'all ready. 
Okay, so let's start breaking down the digestive system first. So when you look at the human body, you get into human anatomy, the digestive system is not just for alleviating, uh, you know, a macro waste up out of the body, but it's also for absorbing things inside of a small nine inch intestinal tract called the duodenum. Right. That's where all your absorption factors happen at. Uh, whenever you eat food, the first thing you do is you put it in your mouth. When you put it in your mouth, digest them immediately start because you start chewing away at the food. Once you start chewing away at the food with your teeth, your salivary glands produces something called amulose and trypsin. Amulose and trypsin or alkaline digestive secretions. These are supposed to help break down the food after you get into a watery substance, which a lot of y'all do not properly chew your foods. So you don't you miss the digestive uh, enzyme in your mouth anyway because you're not properly chewing with your cheek teeth before you even swallow the food to make it down into the stomach so the first thing we miss is super chewing you have to super chew your food especially if you're going to be eating food not not combined right or out of out of uh out of uh, the circadian rhythm not eating at the right times of day you need to make sure you're super chewing your food. A lot of us don't even know how to chew properly. So when you super chew your food, the, the alkaline digestive enzymes, which is trypsin and amulose, help break down your food even more. And they help alkaline your food if the foods that is going in your mouth is kind of acidic. Then you swallow these food down. The food goes through what you will call the esophagus. On its way down the esophagus or what we call the throat, you have tons of mucus glands that just secrete and, and wraps the food in mucus to prepare it for further breakdown breakdown. Then what happens is you have something called a cardiac sphincter. The cardiac sphincter is literally a door that connects from the esophagus and it connects to the stomach. This door is called the cardiac sphincter. Now, usually this cardiac sphincter only works if you get in magnesium inside of your diet. So you need things with magnesium, 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 lentil beans, uh, sprouted lentil beans got a lot of magnesium in them. You can do things like that. Also a sweet potato, boiled sweet potatoes have a lot of magnesium. Sweet potatoes probably have more magnesium than anything in it. So eat you some boiled sweet potatoes. I'm not here for whether sweet potatoes, hybrid, alkaline. I don't really believe in nobody else's philosophy about that. So I'm not here to go back and forth with y'all. Sweet potatoes is good. Sweet potatoes is on Master Hill and Master Herbalist Jockey List. So if you're sweet potato, if you're getting sweet potatoes in and you're getting your magnesium in and things like that, then that door is working right. So once the food passes the cardiac sphincter, which is controlled by, by magnesium, and zinc, the door closes. It closes and then the food gets into the stomach. Inside the stomach, you have the atrium of the stomach and you have something called the fungus of the stomach and the body of the stomach. The moment the food gets in the body of the stomach, what happens is mucus and hydrochloric acid mix together. When mucus and hydrochloric acid mix together, it creates something called pepsinogen or pepsin. Pepsin is supposed to break down your food. So pepsin is going to work breaking down your food. Once your food is broken down into what we call phytochemicals or micronutrients or phytonutrients, then what happens is you have something called the pyloric sphincter, which is at the end of the stomach open up. And again, this is by magnesium and zinc. Then the food slides into a small nine inch intestinal tract called the duodenum. The moment the food gets inside the duodenum, you have millions and millions and trillions of microbes or what we call microorganisms that stuck inside of villi that's just waiting on food to get there. And they come up, help you ferment and break down your food more and then they bring the food to blood capillaries and then from there all the phytonutrients go inside of the bloodstream and get distributed to 150 trillion cells of the body for the cells can get their phytonutrients they macronutrients they hydration and things that they need like water salt and potassium ratios where you can go out your day and have an everyday functioning and it's going to feed the mitochondria the glucose or the fructose that you have eaten for ATP which stands for adenosine triphosphate can yield uh to to yield energy in the mitochondria and this is what gives you vitality and this is what gives you power now you're gonna have a lot of my, uh, micro macro stuff left over and this is what you call poop or defecation and that's what you poop out in the toilet but what is happening to all the cellular waste that the cells ate that is getting left in the cells and then what happens is the lymphatic system comes and it picks up all the them healing constituents and it, and it redistributed back in the blood S uh, sometimes the, the mucosa membrane need, needs it to rebuild the mucosa uh, defense system or we, what we call the lymphatic defense system the doctors actually call it the immunological system we're all talking about the same system here right and then all again all the micro leave out through your urination all the macro leave out through your intestinal defecation 
right? Now, I want to show you what happened when you do not combine your food right. Because notice I said we go through a digestive system of fermentation. That's the process that I was just talking about. Where the microbes come and they start working and they start eating away and breaking down the food more. And then fermentation that sets in. Do you see that? Not putrefaction. Putrefaction is what happens when you eat meat. That's why we're not supposed to be eating meat because you have do you have two type of digestive process depending on what type of species you, species you is. If we were a carnivore meat eating species, then we would go through putrefaction. Not only would we go through putrefaction, but our digestional tracts will be much much shorter and they will be larger. Not only that, we will sleep to up to eighteen hours a day because we need to yield that much ATP and energy to actually break down these polypeptide chains or what you call proteins. So y'all body is not made for animal protein digestion. And I'm going to show y'all. So we are single cell organisms or what you call a prokaryotic cell. Every other nation of people is called a eukaryotic cell. We are different. We come from different areas of the cosmos. So that means we have a very selective diet. And what's happening is we're learning the culture of other people and where we have bought into their diet and not our living. And we're mixing and combining our foods wrong. And a lot of the acid ash kickbacks that we have in and a lot of the acid doses that we have and the inflammation that we have and all the diseases that setting in and shutting down our systems and our organs and killing our bodies, giving us all of these detoxification healing crises that we call diseases is because we're putting the wrong thing inside of our body because you have been made to be bought into another people culture and you don't realize who you are, what you're supposed to be eating. So I'm going to show you that. So we go through something called fermentation, not putrefaction. So imagine me eating this hamburger, right? Now, when you look at this hamburger, you see two pieces of bread, you see a tomato, you see cheese, you see lettuce, and you see meat. So what we have to do is we have to, and you've got french fries too. We have to break these foods down into the categories that they are. Or, all right, so when you get the bread part, we're going to say the bread is grains. Grains is the seeds of harvest grass. That's what grains is. Grains is nothing but the seeds of grass. So whenever you eat grains or whenever you eat bread, whenever you eat spelt, whenever you eat rye, whenever you eat anything, the, your, your donuts, whenever you eat your honey buns, your cinnamon buns, you're eating the seeds of grass. Your stomach, it does not have a high enough hydrochloric acid inside of it to break down the seeds of grass. In fact, if you eat raw grass, some people can get sick. There's been many cases where people ate a lot of raw grass and tried to eat like cows and herbivores and they actually have died from it you think i'm lying check my quotes and just look these things up because your body is not made to actually chew these seeds or these high yielding grass and break them down because the hydrochloric acid or the pepsin and pepsinogen that's produced inside of the fungus in the body and the atrium of your stomach is not even hot enough and it don't yield that type of ph to break through these polypeptides so i want to talk about grains for a minute now when you look at grains grains are the seeds of grass now grass been around around for more than a hundred million years, right? Been around for more, more than a hundred million years. Uh, uh, it was a scientist in 1934 and 1942, an archaeologist. What they was doing was they were searching in the St. Levant. They was all out in the Levant, Levant and they was looking for ancient culture. They ran up a past a culture uh, called the, the Natufian tribe, and it dated back almost 10,000 years ago. And what they noticed with the Natufian tribes is that they loved their grains. And, and if you look at the teeth of the Natufian people, their teeth was very rotten. Their teeth was we had holes in it. They had a lot of cavities and stuff like that and you have to ask yourself why do they have these cavities it's actually from the grains because these are high carbohydrates meaning that these are many complex sugars and complex sugars is bad for you just like complex amino acids or what you call proteins these both both of these things are bad for you right so imagine this imagine you trying to eat seeds and your body cannot break down seeds and it's just going through the stomach and it's tearing things up not only that if you look at a grain up under a magnifying gland glass and you test the actual proteins of, of grains, grains have more than 42 amino acids. These amino acid chains are called uh, high peptide bonds. This means you have a many different amino acids stuck together, and this is what they call a protein. Now, you have many different proteins inside of grains. One of the proteins I want to talk about is called gliadin. Another protein I want to talk about is called wheat germ agglutinin. Right, first, let's talk about gliadin. Gliadin is super bad because it comes from actual, uh, actual amino acids 
acid called prolamine. Now, prolamine is very, very complex in amino acid structures. Nothing can break it down. Nothing in your body can break it down. But guess what? The hydrocaloric acid inside a carnivore like a feline or uh, like a like a lion, uh, like a dog or a wolf, they can break prolamine down. They can broke prolamine down. They can broke gliadin down, but you can't. So what happens is gliadin has the potential to actually pass the blood and barrier, the blood and brain barrier and goes to your brain and it actually look like a, a, a opioid and a, dope, a dopamine receptor. It looked like opioid and a dopamine receptor. So since it looked like that and it mimicked these protein receptors in your brain, it literally binds to the chemistry in your brain and it stimulates your appetite. That's why when people eat donuts and people eat bread and people eat things in pizza, you can't get enough and you want to eat more and you want to eat more. Not only that, it is showing that gliadin actually changes your mood swings. It actually acts as serotonin and change the way you view reality and change your emotions. So we see a lot of people that is high off the bread and it's high off the grain. They have anger problems. They have mood swings. They have all these different issues. You see what I'm saying? And then you cannot break them down. Remember, I said that it's over 42 amino acid chains. They break down in, type, in probably nine amino acid peptide bonds or what you call proteins. So the hydrochloric acid breaks a few of them down, but it always leaves six polypeptide bonds. These polypeptide bonds are strong enough to actually knock over the villi in that small intestinal inch tract that I call the duodenum. And then they go and pass the blood barrier and then they start causing, they call, it's called a primary antigen. And they causes an immunological response. So a lot of people with like celiac disease or allergens and all these different diseases is coming from the actual proteins that your hydrochloric acid cannot break down because you're not made to eat grains and eat the seeds of grass. You see that? Not only that, grains are very, very, very dehydrating. They actually suck all of the water out of the cells and leave salt in the cells and leave potassium or what you call potash in the cells. That's where p potassium come from. Potassium. Potash. So, and it leaves all of that there. Now, not only that, it's another protein called wheat germ agglutinin. Now, when you look at the word agglutinin, this comes from a word called agglutination. Agglutination means the coagulation of the blood, the coagulation of the circulatory system. So we have a protein that's inside of grains called wheat germ agglutinin that actually coagulates your blood. And this is the reason why a lot of people get clunky blood or they have poor circulation when they're eating a lot of breads, they're eating a lot of donuts, they're eating a lot of spilt, they're eating a lot of rye because of this thing here. Now, let's not talking about gluten. If you cut off the word of gluten, it's something called glue because it have that agglutination in it. These things cluck up the blood and they, and they cause your circulatory system to go low. Now, the problem with that is you have something called acetylcholine and acetylcholine esterase that's actually produced by the adrenal glands and it releases these hormones and these chemicals into the bloodstream to kick on the lymphatic system so you can start draining all the metabolic waste that you've been eating and that your body been breaking down. Now, if, if your blood is coagulated and if your lymphatic system is stagnated because everything is going through this agglomerate uh, uh, coagulation or agglutination because of the wheat germ agglutinin that you've been eating, that means that your body will not detoxify itself naturally. So you're stopping your body from detoxifying itself naturally from eating these grains. Not only that, it's causing an immunological response so the lymphatic system, defense system is going to respond and it's going to be very mucus forming. Then it trips the thyroid gland and the parathyroid, the T cells and the three cells, so now you have calcium being pulled from the calcium matrix of the bone to become a a buffering system for the acids and for the mucus. So now this is where you get gout from. This is where you get all these different arthritis and these symptoms from and your bones and your joints start locking up because calcium have come to save the day trying to put out the inflammation and put out the acids. And we already know the uric acid and carbonic acid, which come from carbohydrates mixed with calcium and mucus, it, it, it's called solidification. It's going to calcify and solidify. So now we got people walking around with gout. We got people walking around with with, with mushrooms growing out their skin. We got people walking around with toenail fungus and fungus problems. We got people walking around with cirrhosis of the liver because the fermentation cannot happen uh, cannot happen properly. So now the fermentation is creating alcohol because you're eating grains and grains cannot be properly broken down in your body. So all of the other things that's being left over that can't be alleviated from the body because the lymphatic system have been slowed down because you're not producing acetylcholine, acetylcholine and acetylcholine nesterase because the quote 
coagulation of the blood and a coagulation of the lymphatic system because you're eating gliadin, which come from wheat. You see that you're eating a uh, 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 wheat germ agglutinin, which come from wheat. You're eating gluten, which come from wheat. You're eating the amino acid promaline, which come from wheat. You're eating the actual uh, lectin called zion, which come from your corns, which come from your grains. You're eating all of these different constituents that's not made for human consumption. These things are made for uh, herbivores. These are not made for omnivores. These things are not made for frugivores. These things are not made for carnivores. They're made for herbivores. Herbivores are your two-ton species animals like your cows, your horses, your hippos, and things like that. They body can make these things and they bodies have more than one stomach. So they can eat these things. You can. All right, so that's just bread. Now, your body can't break bread down. This is sugar. Now, the longer sugar sits in the system and as long as sugar sits in the system with heat, what happens if you put grapes in a pool of heat and you're constantly trying to break these grapes down? It creates sugar. These sugars create alcohols as alcohol create wines and spirits. This is where you get cognac from. This is where you get wine from. It's all talking about the defecation of fruits, the riding fruit to fact. I mean, the riding fermentation of fruits. Imagine this going down in your stomach because your body cannot break down things that you're putting in it like bread. So that's just bread. Let's move on. Now we got the tomato, which is a fruit. So now you're mixing the seeds of grass, right? Which is a karyopsis fruit. Look it up, y'all. Karyopsis. Karyopsis. C A R Y O P S I S. Karyopsis fruit. If you're into botany and if you're a true herb, uh, herb, uh, herbologist like I am, you know what a karyopsis is. A karyopsis is what a grain is because usually grains is a single seed that sits inside of a hull of a fruit skin. So grains is naturally considered fruits. If you really look into the animal kingdom, all animals are frugivores but carnivores because usually what you see in the actual herbivores eating is fruits that's not considered fruits to humans. So we call them herbs or we because we talking about the seeds. Whenever you get into the definition of the fruit, the productive part of the plant is the fruit. The seed is a part of the productive part. The ovary is part of the productive part. The bud is part of the productive part. You see that all the pod is part of the productive part. The legume is part of the productive part. The nut is part of the productive part. The bean is part of the productive part. That's the reason why if you just put a little water on it, you can sprout them because these are classified as fruits. What happened is in 1714 all the way to 1920, they was trying to get fruits into the USA by way of Mexico and by way of Europe. And they was taxing them. The government was taxing them like hell. So the only way that they can get it in without getting taxed they had to pass a lot of your fruits as vegetables but a lot of your vegetables are really fruits it's just that the government lied for they can for they can evade paying their taxes we oui. so now you're mixing grains which is the seeds of grass the harvest seeds of grass with tomatoes first thing we got to talk about with the tomato the tomato if not properly cooked or made right it is a nightshade Right. That's your homework. Look up what a nightshade is. I'm not going to give you all the juice today. I'm going to give y'all something which y'all can look up. Look up nightshades. All right. Two, tomato is a fruit. So not only is we mixing grains, which is seeds, which is very hard to break down, but you mixing it with something that breaks down within 40 minutes. It take a grain to break down. And remember, grains cannot properly break down. They only break down to six polypeptide chains, six to amino acids. Oh, it's 42 amino acids in them. They only break down to six. So you cannot completely break down your actual amino acids that comes from your wheat. All right. So this don't even get properly broke down. Then you mix it with something that breaks down within 30 to 40 minutes, which is a tomato. A tomato is 88 percent water. A grain probably have seven percent water in them. And most of them are dried grains, because if 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 Hashemesh, which is the sun, Ra, don't dry the water out, they're going to dry out when they process it and put it in bags and ship it to your local farmers market and, and superstore and uh, in, in super grocery store anyway. So you mix in something that's very dry. Then you mix it with something that's very watery. Uh Oh, so something's going to have to break down first. Now, you eating these things together. You eating a whole hamburger, right? So what's going to choose to break down first? The fruit, the watery fruit. Now, when it breaks down, guess what? The, the microbacillus, the macrobacillus in your stomach, the biobifinum bacteria in your stomach, the candida albumins in your stomach is going to choose to break the simplest thing down first because all they care about is energy. 
They ain't going to, why would they want to break this down? They don't yield energy from that. They yield methane from breaking this down. That's why when you eat burgers, you fart and you eat things that's hard to break down, you're farting. That's because the amylopectin C protein or the amylopectin C glucose index is broken down too slow. So all the work that the actual microbiota is doing to break it down, they yield high methane out of it and carbonic acid off of it. So now you walk around and how you can do is relieve this gas and, and relieve this funk because you have high methane because your microbiota and the microorganisms, the single cell prokaryotic cells that's in your stomach spent too long trying to break this stuff down. So it's going to say, I'm not going to work all day breaking the seeds down. I'm going to choose to break the tomato down. So now you have a tomato, which is a fruit, 88% water that's going to get broken down very easily. Then it's going to break down and ferment and sit on top of grains that can't break down at all. Uh-oh, fermentation, huh? plus proteins that's rotting, putrefaction in the stomach creates what you call mold. So now you have mold. Or what you call antibiotics, which is a bad thing. Anti means against. Bio means life. Antibiotics. Antibacterial. Antimicrobial. So now you have something that's against life being created like mold spores inside the stomach. All because you have been misformed and you are improperly combining your food. Now what's crazy is we only talking about the grains and the fruit. The bread and the tomato. We ain't even got to the cheese. Yeah, let me get that. Let me get that hamburger with extra cheese, please. So let's go to the cheese. So now we didn't cover the grains a little bit. I could I can go for hours and hours with grains, but we're not going to go that deep. I just want to show y'all what we going on. I can go hours and hours on nightshades and tomatoes and the, and the actual chemical makeup to make on tomatoes. But we're not going to go that hard. Let's talk about the dairy products. Oh, we dairy products which come from either a goat or a cow. Last time I checked, you are a god in the earth. You come from the cosmic realm. You are the creators here on earth. You ain't a damn goat nor a cow. So you eat things that's not a part of your human stuff. Since when you break down a chemical bio, the biochemical makeup of dairy products, it is actually the pus, the blood, and the lymphatic mucosa system of a cow. So you're literally drinking the blood and the pus and the mucosa system of a cow. Not only that, it is her lactose milk as well of a cow. Notice cows feed baby calves. Cows don't feed. Well, I'm going to say this. Cows feed their babies, which is baby calves. Cows don't feed little boys and children. You know what I'm saying? When we look at us, we the only species that on earth that will have birth and go put our children on a tit of a cow or on a tit of a goat by way of a bottle and by way of uh, all these different uh, formulas and all of that. Cows don't do that. When you see a baby gorilla come out, guess what the baby gorilla going to suck on? Gorilla mama titties. Just like a baby cow going to suck on big mama cow titties. We're the only species that suck on other species titties. Only one. All right. Now, now remember what I just said. When you suck on milk, your milk is created by prolactin. Prolactin is released from the pituitary gland by way of the of the hypocampus and the hypothalamus gland. This is what stimulates the prolactin to even get the milk duds flowing to release milk through the human anatomy. This is mixed with the lymphatic system, the mucosal system, and the blood. Mucus and blood created together is called pus. So whenever you're drinking milk, you're drinking sugary pus, family. You might as well get that sugary plus from your mama between the ages of one and three. Not only that, when milk come out before it's heated and untreated, it is pink and it's slobby. And the reason why it's pink and slobby is because it's pus, mucus, and it's mixed with blood. So they have to put it under high strenuous heat and turn it white. But your milk ain't looking like that coming straight from out of that cow's tit. So you done mix grains that the body cannot break down with fruits that the body break down easy, which creates mold. On top of that, you're going to put the most carcinogenic thing in your body called dairy products, which is so look, we got carbonic acid. OK, right. Carbonic acid, citric acid. Now we moving over into lactic acid, lactose, lactase, milk. All right, you mixing all these things together and they all improper. Now, milk don't digest at all. It immediately turns mucus forming the moment it hits your mouth because amulose and amylase do not like the taste of dairy products that don't come from your mother.
Oh, we. So you got the number one carcinogenic, the number one cancer causing thing on this burger that we call cheese. You got something that break down and have 88 percent water in it, H3O2 water in it that breaks down super fast. That goes through fermentation and it's a nice shade and it's citric acid. Then you're going to mix it with carbonic acid and different poly complex amino acid chains that we call gliadin, that we call lectin and that we call wheat germ agglutinin. Oh, we. Y'all, we still got more to go. So you're mixing the seeds of grass that we call grains with a fruit. Then you're mixing the seeds of grass and what we call grains with a fruit with snot and pus and blood or what you call lactose. Then you have the nerve to say, put a vegetable on there. Let me get that with some lettuce, dog. Then you get some lettuce. Knowing these people, they're going to use iceberg lettuce, which is treated with pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides. But let's just say you have your own form and you have grown all these things yourself the organic way. It's still going to kill you because you ain't supposed to be eating dairy products from a cow. You ain't supposed to be eating grains because that's not a part of your human anatomy. You're not supposed to be mixing these things with fruits because it's going to cause fermentation and putrefaction. And your damn sure ain't supposed to be mixing it with a vegetable. So now you're mixing the seeds of grain... With dairy products and milk, with fruit, and you're adding a vegetable called lettuce. Ooh, we. <laughs> Ooh, we. What are we going to say about that? Huh? Then you have the nerve to say, let me get a quarter pounder of that dog, and you add meat, which your body cannot break down at all. Your digestional uh, 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 intestines are way too long. You don't sleep. 14 to 18 hours a day. You don't have claws or talons to rip into your prey. You don't have long canines to rip the meat from the flesh of the bone. You don't have an actual horizontal vertebrae. You have an actual vertical vertebrae. So you can't get up to 70 and 80 miles an hour to track down your prey. Nothing about you screams predator. Everything about you screams nurturing being. You see that? Ooh, we. I don't see nails to, to, to claw in. No, you got to use a knife. You got to use a fork. Huh? You see that? G guess what? When you get your steak, you got to use a, 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 a steak knife. Hey, ain't not B. Yes, sir. Don't they got something called a steak, a steak knife? Yes, sir. They got a steak knife. You got to get a steak knife to cut into your steak. You can't, you can't get your fingers and uh, rip that open like a, like a lion can, like a tiger can. Showing you that you ain't even made for meat. And guess what? When you grill and when you cook meat, you cook all the blood out of the meat. Guess where all the phytonutrients is at, family? It's in the blood. That's why when a, a, a tiger or a lion track down a prey, they eat it still alive. For they can get the nutrients from the blood of that animal. Then they get the proteins from the animal. Notice they have to sleep all day just to digest it because it takes all of their energy to break it down. Not only that, the moment that you put your meat in high temperatures, you cook out all the phytonutrients. Because the biophotons and the bioflavonoids and all the phytochemicals was in the actual blood of the meat. You done cooked it to high heavens because you know you ain't really supposed to be eating it. Then once you cook it, there is something called heterocyclic amines. Think I'm lying? Look it up. Heterocyclic amines. Heterocyclic amines is very carcinogenic, y'all. It causes liver failure. It causes fatty uh, uh fatty acids on the liver. It causes high cholesterol. This comes from cooking the meat. Not only that, you have something called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that come from your meat. And it's just the smelling of the aromatic aromatase that comes from the meat. Guess what this causes? Throat cancer, lung cancer, tongue cancer. Yes, a lot of the mucus that comes from your nose and pink eye and bad eyes, dry eyes, white eyes, yellow eyes, all the different dangerous colors of the eyes. This comes from just smelling the cooking and the smoke from the meat. You think I'm lying? Look it up. Look it up. Heterocyclic amines, which come from polypeptides, meats, and then polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Google it. This is a common Google. You can look these up. Just by cooking and smelling the meat, it will kill you dead as a doorknob. And the hydrochloric acid inside your stomach cannot break these things down. Now, you're going to have a lot of Caucasians. I don't have no issue against Caucasians. I just love science. A lot of Caucasians will get on here and say, well, I'm on an all-meat diet. I eat nothing but a high, raw meat diet. Y'all biochemical makeup are different than ours. A lot of y'all come from Neanderthals. So y'all have the hydrochloric acid inside of y'all stomachs, and y'all have the 
widened jaw lines to eat these type of things. If you actually look at the teeth of a Caucasian and you look at the digestional tract of a Caucasian, if you look at the actual biobifinobacteria, you look at the lactose bilis bacteria of a Caucasian male and female, even in, in, in a female vagina, the bacteria is different. The acid is different. The, the, the actual construction of the digestional tract is different. Even the hydrocaloric acid levels, the pH power hit is different. Even a cardiac kick that comes from the adrenal glands is different because we are different species of a people. Don't mean that I'm talking about y'all. Don't mean that I'm, I'm getting on y'all heads. I'm not coming on here as a racist or president. I'm just coming on here as a biochemist, a biochemist and a science to show you that it's different. So a lot of y'all can eat these things and y'all will be okay. But as far as my people, the carbon nation, the melanin nation, the gods and the earth, you come from a higher realm. You are procreatic cells. You are a simple cell organism. Come from single cell organism. You come from Henrietta Lacks cells. You see that? You are made to live forever. You can't eat these type of things. You need a higher diet to fuel your higher consciousness. Just saying. Just saying. Look these things up. So let's talk about it again. Grains, which is the seeds of grass. You can't break down gliadin. You can't break down prolamine. You can't break down wheat germ or gluten. You can't break down the polypeptide derived chains that come from these things. You can't miss the acid ash and the carbonic acids that come from these things. And your stomach can't break them down so they tear up your intestinal tract. Then we're going to go to the citric acid nightshade you call tomatoes with 88% H2O2. This is going to break down super fast, which is going to break down on top of these seeds. And it's going to create mold and it's going to create fermentation and fungus in your system. Now, this is the reason why you have patchy skin, psoriasis. A lot of people don't know psoriasis is a part of the herpes family. Oh, we. Let's let's talk about that, because then we're going to talk about we're going to have to talk about microorganisms or what you call pleomorphic. Look these things up, family, pleomorphic organisms that are created with inside of the body that doesn't come from outside of the body. See, because you are believing in these diseases and you're believing in what you've been taught all of your life. So you think diseases, you can catch a disease, contagion, diseases come from outside. No, diseases come from the terrain. Diseases come from within inside of the cell. Because the cell is trying to detoxify itself in the exosomes and the lysosomes, which is the digestive system, and the urinary tract of the cells are backed up. So uh, pleomorphic organisms are birthed from something called glandules that's inside the cells. Parasites come from within inside of you, just like fruit flies come from within inside of the fruit. But that's a whole nother topic, family. So you mix them with the dairy. The lactose, ooh wee, the number one carcinogenic for asthma, for bronchitis, for all types of upper respiratory diseases, you mix it with that. Then you have the nerve to say, add some lettuce on that dog. See, we have the complex that we think if we add lettuce like we're herbivores when we're frugivores, you're not herbivore, you're frugivore. You you get the complex that's just going to make this burger better. You just, you made it more complex. Then on top of that, you want to add meat. And again, heterocyclic amines, polycyclic, aromatic hydrocarbons. Look these things up. Look up the polypeptide chains. Look at what you call stress meats and how they're killing these animals. And then you are eating these dopamines. You're eating this acetylcholine. You're eating the adrenaline, the adrenaline and the adrenochrome of the meats. And then you start having anxiety attacks. Your thyroid grow that go down. Your cholesterol raises from eating these stress meats because you haven't realized that the animals is your brothers and sisters. Because we have been taught and trained by another people to look at these things like they are inferior to us. Ooh, we. Then you have the nerve to say, let me get that with a side of fries, dog. Side of fries, a potato, which is 90% water. Now, you got the wrong potato as that because most of the table the potatoes you got is GMO. Not only that, you're going to mix this potato, which is 90 percent water with hot oil and you're going to turn this oil over 300 degrees. So now you're mixing oil and water and water and oil do not mix. They teach you this in elementary school. 
water and oil don't mix. So the body is going to choose to break down one first. So guess what the body is going to break down and digest? The water and the potato. Guess what it's going to do to the to the oil? It's called a fontanel. A, a turn, look it up. Fontanel. An alternative route of elimination. It is literally going to push all of the oil in pockets of the body. Now guess what? The pockets can't stand it, so it's going to push it into the bloodstream. The bloodstream can't stand it, so it's going to call calcium. Calcium is going to then plaque the oil on the artery walls. Uh, oh, when too much plaquing of cholesterol builds up, they call this what? Heart attack and stroke. Oh, man. You see why these things are not made to be mixed, are not made to be combined? Do you see that? We have to rightfully and righteously start combining our foods. So let's talk about how to combine your foods the right way. If you're going to eat fruits, eat fruits by themselves. Wait till the digestive process go down and then start eating other things. If you want to eat other things, never mix your melons with other fruits. Melons break down the fastest because they have 98 to 99 percent water in them. And since they break down faster and you're going to put it on top of another fruit, what's going to happen is you're going to create more alcohol. And there's been studies that shown that people get drunk and get into accidents. They never had a drink in their life and they wondering how they how they was intoxicated. They was intoxicated because they did not choose to eat their melons alone. Eat your melons alone or leave them alone. See that? Another thing, don't miss. Don't mix your citrix fruit or what you'll call your acid fruits with your sweet fruits. This causes a pH imbalance inside of the stomach. If you're going to have sweet fruits, eat sweet fruits only. If you're going to have citric fruits or acid fruits, eat citric or acid fruits alone. Leave them by themselves. Now, you can mix them with sub-acid fruits or sub-sweet fruits, but don't go from, 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 from sweet all the way to acid and mix them together. This causes poor digestion because this actually tricks the hydrochloric acid inside the stomach and it tricks the actual pepsinogen inside the stomach, right? Now you're going to have all of these different enzymic reactions from the pancreas uh, creating uh, uh, sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate going to be in the system and they ain't going to know what the hell to do. You see that? Never mix your proteins with anything. If you're going to be a protein eater, eat nothing but proteins. That's what all meat eaters do. I've never seen a lion eat anything but meat ever. Ever in my life. Now, on occasion, if he have a very, very piss poor, bad stomach, he probably eat a few grasses and it, to throw things up because that's what grass does. Grass is actually poison to animal to, to any animal that's not a herbivore. So it'll give you a purging effect. The same thing that herbs do, which is nothing but grass to us or plants to us. That's why herbs give you a purging effect to have you throwing up. Have, it gives you diarrhea. Have your skin defecating. It, it gives you a runny nose. It throws you into a healing crisis because the highly active stimulants inside of herbs just Herbs is a stimulant. Let's keep it real. It's going to have you actually throwing up and relieving to get rid of all the metabolic waste that have been built up in your body. So, so every now and then you probably see a lion eat some grass. But the only reason I eat it because he's sick as hell and he know the grass. The grass ain't meant for him to eat. So it's going to upset his stomach. He's going to throw everything else up in his stomach. You see that? So always eat your proteins by themselves if you choose to eat proteins. And I'm not saying it like proteins is not in everything. Proteins is in everything. But there are certain proteins that we can eat and certain proteins that we can't. I don't need, I hate the word protein. I believe in amino acid structures. But we were created to eat simple amino acid structures. You see that? If you're going to choose to eat grains, I will give you good grains to eat. Stay away from spelt. Spelt have gluten in it. You don't believe me? Look it up. And spelt is a GMO. Spelt folks, spelt come from armor wheat. Armor wheat come from icorn wheat. You see that? So it was it was icorn wheat. Icorn wheat made it with a rye grass and created armor wheat. Armor wheat then uh, made it with something called. Uh, uh, tetritium and tetritium actually created something what you call spelt wheat. Then spelt wheat was was modified and, and, and given over into something called polyploidy. Look it up, polyploidy. And then these is where you get all of these different strands from. We literally went from a 14 chromosome plant to a 42 chromosome plant that you call spelt. And we think spelt is alkaline. That is a 42 chromosome plant that is whooping a lot of our butts and we don't even know it. And that's why I can't wait to the first episode of Food Forensic Investigation to come out because we're going over spelt. So stay away from spelt. You see that? Stay away from all of the rise. You know what's, what is a good grain you can't eat that will break down properly, that won't mess up your system, that's not that don't have gluten? Teff. Teff. Another grain that's good for you that does have in these things. 
Quinoa. That's another one. Don't eat too much quinoa because too much quinoa is mucus forming. You see what I'm saying? But do not mix your grains with other watery fruits. Sprout your grains. Eat them by themselves, y'all. Notice you have to start mono fasting, mono eating. You don't see anybody in nature mixing their fruit foods together. This only happens to people like us. We the only ones that mix everything together. You think you need meat on your plate? With a how how do it go now be? Meat, protein, carb, meat, and up. Yeah, you the only starch. and starches. You the only one to think you need a meat, protein, carb, and starches. Nobody else in nature eat like that. Show me one animal to eat like that. You're the only mammal on planet Earth that eat like that. And we wonder why we so sick and full of disease. You see that? That's what I'm saying. I'm not worried about anybody on here disagreeing with me. Can't nobody prove me wrong. And I'm not going to even give y'all no, this, this little uh, wayward person that's on here. Look, I got plenty of years. I am a biochemist. I am a herbalist, certified, master healer. Plenty, too many healing testimonies, y'all. We in the laboratories. We doing the work. We have the healing homes. We buying the lands. We shipping the herbs. I have my own clinic, y'all. Like, the uh, y'all, anything I tell, look, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. That's how you know that I'm not spitting no bull job. Get on here and try your hardest to prove me wrong. And you're going you gonna to become a believer today. Go look up everything I ever told y'all. I ain't never rattled nothing off. I'm very careful with what I teach the masses and what I teach my people because I'm trying to liberate and free my people. I would never get on here and just be talking out the side of my neck or speaking from ego, y'all. Everything I say, please check my facts. Please look me up. Look it up. Look everything I say up and y'all going to find it to be true. We must start eating from the proper combinations of food. We have to stop mixing all of our foods together. Your biggest classroom is not a book. Your biggest classroom is not a brother that's sitting next to you. Your biggest not your classroom is not grandma and grandpa. Your biggest classroom is not the OG. Your biggest classroom is nature. Go quiet your mind. Go in solitude. Sit in nature and study nature. Study plants. Study animals. Look how they act and interact within their environment, and it will blow your mind. We've been living backwards. We've been living wrong, and that's the reason why we die more than any other species that's inhabiting this planet. And these are the facts. Somebody said, just, just don't eat. There's plenty of things that you can eat. Please don't get on here making ignorant comments, y'all. I know it hurts because these things are very, very addictive. You know, they, 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 they actually stimulates the award center of the brain of the hypothalamus gland of what we call the dopamine receptors, the opioid receptors, the serotonin and melatonin receptors. So I understand that these are very, very addictive foods. You're more addicted to sugar than, than, than drugs. And, and it's made like that on purpose. But we can change this, y'all. This is not an end all. We can do better, family. And there's a lot of things that's on this earth that is good to eat. This is not an end all. Y'all think that we're taking all the food? No, we're taking the bad stuff away. There's a lot of good things that you can eat, family. There's over 3,000. 3,000, just 3,000 different varieties of fruits in the west, in the western part of the USA. I'm not even talking about the northern and the eastern. Let's not even talk about Florida or these different type of islands. I'm talking about just in the western part, Midwest. There's over 3,000 different variations of fruit. And you telling me that I'm taking all your food away? Get your study up, family. We just talking about fruit. We ain't even talking about vegetables. We ain't talking about, I mean, look, there is so much food in this world. We just got to tap into it, family. We just got to tap into it, family. So look, just get on here to learn. Open your ears, open your mind. Don't be so quick to run your mouth, family. Open your ears and open your minds and learn. Remember, because I'm not really teaching y'all anything. These things is already within your DNA. If you will eat right, if you will meditate, and if you will let all this bull crap go that's in your life, you'll be able to start remembering these things on your own. Look, everything I say up, family. So that's what I wanted to get on here and teach y'all. just about the proper food combinations, family. Uh, I'm going to start back going live again. Uh, we traveling. We getting the food. Forensics done and all of that. Yes, the food pyramid. And I'm glad you said that, uh, Esther Loco. Uh, and that's what it is. The, they, you just been taught wrong. The food pyramid taught y'all wrong. But it's a lot of stuff that I can't say on this platform. Yaki TV is done. We just waiting to test it. So these things I'll be able to talk about in the open on my own platform. It's just, you see how they censor me on here like crazy. Y'all see how they took down my, my uh, YouTube with a hundred thousand subscribers. Y'all see how they take down my Facebook videos and y'all see how they censor me on IG. So I'm learning 
in order to keep teaching y'all, I just have to be smarter in the way that I teach and communicate. But on my own platform, y'all going to get everything that y'all need to get. But on here, I do got to be very, very uh careful. Ezekiel bread is a no-no. That's one of the biggest scams in, in history. They, they Ezekiel bread tell you, these are ancient grains. Then you look up what the ancient grains is. They got wheat. They got gluten and everything in them. If you, like I, I gave y'all a safe grain, teff. And I'll give y'all more safe grains as I as I continue to go live. But teff is a safe grain. Ra is not a, a safe grain. Spelt is definitely not a safe grain. Uh, quinoa is considered uh, a lagoon. It's part of the lagoon family or part of the pod family. Uh, quinoa can be a grain, but these are more open seeds. So they're not a karyopsis type of fruit. And we're going to start getting into botany and getting into classifications of fruits and grains and stuff. For y'all can start getting familiar with the scientific and the, and the botany uh, word to these things. That way you can start identifying with your food and you can have a closer relationship with your food. And you can know exactly what you put in your mouth. Even if you still choose to eat wrong, you know exactly what you're doing to eat wrong. You see what I'm saying? And when you when you have information about something and, and when you're very knowledgeable about something, it makes your decision e easier. You're either going to be saying, no, nah, I'm not going to kill myself today or, OK, I don't mind killing myself today day. You know what I'm saying? Literally. I know that sounds like a, a maniac, but at least you will have that distinctive choice. Right now, these people are taking the choice from us. We don't know what the hell we eat it. We don't, we don't got a choice. At least give me the choice to say, I, I know everything that's in this burger. Now I can eat it. I know this ain't good for me, but we don't even know. And that's the reason why I'm here to give you the, the, the basic food forensic investigation knowledge about what's going on with your bodies, about what's going on with your food, about what's going on with your inner anatomy, your spiritual body, your fifth dimensional body, any in religion, all that. That's why I spent my entire life studying these things and applying my knowledge and what I study. If I can bring y'all the true information for you can change your life. If you're looking for any healing herbs, any three bitters, anything, I got a lot of healing herbs. I have some of the most powerful herbs in America, and I'm standing on it, tested and approved it, uh, tested and approved. You can uh, hit me up at www.yahkiawakened.com. Just click the link in the bio, www.yakiawaken.com. Again, this is my only IG page that I go live on and I post content on. I do have a backup IG page, but I'm following it. Anybody else hitting y'all up from any other pages with my picture and with my name is not me. I don't do readings. I would never ask you for money online. I don't even respond to DMs, family. So if they responded to you saying help, good, good morning, love, and all of that, I don't even talk like that. They talking about they, 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 they got a quicker way you can get your herbs. There is no quick away right now. If they talking about hit me up through WhatsApp, I don't respond to people on WhatsApp. I never, I never ever do transactions outside of my website. So if anybody trying to get any type of money from you and they're not taking you to www.yakiawaken.com, it is not me. Have a sense of discernment and a spiritual discernment. Everybody out here is trying to get people and acting like other people to get money, y'all. That don't be me. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to get up out of here. I just want to come on here and give, uh, give y'all uh, late night knowledge and chop it up with y'all. So I love y'all and deem the truth. Peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Peace.